Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jebediah. We have a special thing in store for you. We're going to be building this boat behind me. Underneath all this junk is a 10 foot aluminum John boat, but we're going to transform it into the ultimate hunting and fishing vessel. So let's clear all this out. We'll get it into the garage and we'll talk more about it there. We just got the boat into the garage, but I want to do a quick run through with you guys on what is coming. First off, we have HydroTurf, a big shout out to them who sponsored a portion of this video. We're going to be putting HydroTurf in here. We have stencils because it's getting a full repaint. We got seats, LED lights, nav lights, fish finders, fishing pole holders, the whole shebang. This is going to be the ultimate hunting and fishing setup. The key for this build throughout the entire episode series is going to be portability because there's no trailer for this boat right now. We're going to be sticking it in the back of my truck. So everything we do to it, anything we add to it, it's going to have to be very, very lightweight so we can pick it up in and out, drop it into ponds, drop it into the back of my truck. So that's going to be our governing base. All this stuff that I'm doing right now, you can do from the comfort of your own garage. None of this is going to require welding or any kind of specialized tools. So if you want to know how to build your ultimate John boat, make sure you stick around through all of these episodes as we go forward. But let's get into it. I got this boat about a decade ago from some guy's yard. I literally was doing some work on his house. He had this in his backyard. I paid $50 for it. And then uh, we did a little bit of work to paint it and put in the seats that you see right now. But we're going to give it a whole new fresh look and make it a lot more usable for us. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take out all these wood seats. This deck is going to go away and only get a bench back here. This middle seat's going out completely. I want to open up this whole middle space and we're going to take the front here and extend this deck. So we're going to add about 24 inches here, get rid of this middle, make it nice and open, and then simple bench back here. So let's get to tearing some things out. It's a lot of black widows. As you guys can tell, bugs crawling around and cobwebs and stuff. This scene has this thing's been left out. So it's gonna need a really good cleaning before we begin paint. So I'm really excited though, because this little boat is gonna be perfect for what we're trying to use it for, which is going to be throwing it in the back of the truck. We're gonna duck hunt out of it this upcoming duck season here in a few months. We're gonna be fishing out of it during the summer and spring. And so this thing's gonna be an amazing little tool. It's gonna be lightweight, very durable, and very, very useful. So we'll come back at it tomorrow, clean it all up, and then begin the painting process. I'm just trying to go around right now and find all the bare metal spots or the spots where the paints are in really bad condition. I have self-etching primer that I'm using. So any thing where there's deep gashes, cuts through the paint, especially those areas, or if they're flaking or anything like that, we're gonna knock them off and then we spray them with self-etching primer. So once I feel good about finding kind of all those spots, then we're gonna lay our base coat down. I'm just hitting this in different ways. I'm not really caring like if it, uh, I'm trying something new, so just changing the orientation of this stencil. I'm also keeping the other camo pattern that was originally on this boat because um, the more random it looks, the better. So I'm not super concerned if the old pattern shows through underneath because camouflage is meant to look random. It's meant to mimic nature. 
The other thing you want to make sure um, you do when you're buying your paints, obviously is find natural colors if that's the kind of vibe you're going for, but make sure to use flat or ultra flat. There's even some branded camouflage specific type paints. Um, I think Rust-Oleum makes one that's branded for camouflage. It's an ultra flat. Don't use anything that's shiny, so stay away from your satins and obviously your glosses if you're going to be hunting from it like I am. So I don't want anything to be reflective, so everything's going to be matte. But as you go with your patterns, like this hex pattern, I'm just switching up the orientation. It's going to, as I go, just making little blotches. And then what I'm going to do after this, I'll come back through with a different color and lay it over this. And then when I've done that with the hex pattern, I'm going to go back with the Havoc colored or Havoc pattern from Red Leg Camo and do a more natural like brush and block style. So have fun with it though, man. Like you're not going to mess up your paint. So if you don't like what happened, like you don't like how it turned out, you just repaint it. So don't feel like you got to make it look perfect. Camouflage isn't meant to look perfect. It's meant to look like nature and random. And um, so even like right there, I didn't look, I didn't like how that looked. So I just went back and hit it again from a different angle. And it looks fine. With your stencils, try to get them as close to your um, boat as possible. Unless you want them to look fuzzy, which that is like a way to do it. You can have them be fuzzy, but if you want crisp, crisp lines, then you get them next to the boat. As I go with the next stencil pattern, the reg leg camo stencil, I'm gonna tape it down so that it's right up against the boat because uh, it will give me some more clean lines, a crisper image. But for this background stuff, I'm fine with it looking a little fuzzy. And we'll grow in number, fueled by thunder, see the horizon. As you paint your boat, what I end up doing is trimming the stencil. So let me grab the piece. So I cut this off of this top edge. The reason being is it's got so much overlap here that if I was to just stick this whole stencil, I would have about six inches before the pattern even begins. So I cut it with about an inch over the stencil pattern. And then I use tape because I have to do this all by myself. If you have two people or three and you can press the stencil up just with hands, that's fine. But I don't have that luxury. So I use painter's tape. The other thing you have to be aware of is as you're positioning your stencil, make sure that you're properly overlapping from your previous one. So I can see here, this is where my previous stencil ended for this pattern. I want it to be about a quarter of an inch before or a quarter of an inch gap between the last stencil and this one because that's about how consistent these are in the stencil itself so just be be aware as you place it up to make sure that your height is uniform across the uh across the board and then make sure that your distance is uniform because i have done it before where i've just inadvertently placed it a little bit too far and you can see the seam and so if you don't want to be able to see the seam just make sure that you're lining them up properly. The other way you can kind of get around that is by flipping your stencil so that you aren't, you aren't having the pattern be identical every time, but you rotate your stencil either like up and down or if you have a stencil like this where you can go side to side as well, that will also break up any kind of pattern that could be rhythmic where people could see it. So we got about probably another hour, maybe two of painting. I finished one side already, so I have this one to do. So we still got a ways to go.
close till I get up Time is barely on our side I don't wanna waste what's left The storms we chase are leading us And love is all we'll ever trust Yeah, No, I don't wanna waste what's left And on and on we'll go Through the wastelands, through the highways Till my shadow turns to sun rays And on and on we'll go Through the wastelands, through the highways We just finished up painting everything on this boat, which I think it turned out really, really good. We have a lot of different layers in here, different colors. I know that I didn't mention on the outset what colors we used. We used like a chestnut brown, a khaki, an olive green, and then there is some hints of a regular green in here, like a lime green. Uh, but I ended up not liking that color, and so we kind of painted over it. We did do a couple different rounds of painting it different ways to kind of see what we like. So again, as you paint stuff, especially camouflage, you can't really mess it up. So just Try it, if you don't like it, paint it and do it again. We have everything done, the sides, the front and the back. The only thing that's not painted is the floor and we left that open for a reason. We're gonna be in the next episode putting down some hydro turf. And so if you wanna see that, make sure to follow along for more. After flooring, we're gonna be building seats. After seats, it's LED lights. And so we got a whole thing planned for this boat. Make sure to follow along by hitting subscribe so you can see this entire process as we turn this shell of a John boat into one of the ultimate hunting and fishing vessels.